If you stick around for a few moments, you'll hear a sound created by people on a hunting trip by the banks of a lake over 12,000 years ago. Uh, Greetings, welcome. Um, Take a few moments and uh, listen to this with us for a few seconds. And um, that is the sound of, uh, what, 12,000 years ago, we are told. (laughs) We are told, yeah. Uh, What a privilege to be able to listen back through time. Uh, Back through time, probably over 12,000 years, because it's, um, yeah, we're talking about uh, something from the Natufian culture, uh, when we're talking from the uh, ancient Levant, from what is now at a burial, not a burial site, but a, an archaeological site in what is now northern uh, Israel. Mm. Yeah, I'll just read the uh, the the uh, the headline that brings us to this, so we all know where we are. And it is that twelve thousand year old flutes carved of bone are some of the oldest in the world and sound like birds of prey. Mm. Right, that's our starting point. Before we launch off into anything else, just a few words. Um, yeah, if you haven't already done so, hit the like button and uh, and the subscribe button. Button most welcome, and do take a moment uh, to take a look at our Patreon page. There's a link in the description below. Enough said about that. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, what's your favourite thing about this, Rupert? My favourite thing about this? Well, apart from the fact that the Natufians are just a fascinating culture anyway, um, because, I mean, dating from roughly 15,000 to 11,500 years ago, um, but there's all sorts of things associated with them. The earliest known bread, for example, and... um, uh, yes, they really had their act together. So we imagine these hunter-gatherer folks, but they're just, you know, uh, they're sedentary. They're, they they come home. You know, these people are very comfortable in their environment. Mm-hmm. And and then you have these amazing little flutes. I mean, they're tiny little things. They're only, uh, you know, a couple of inches at, at most. And uh, And they've selected these bones from very specific birds to sound like birds of prey. And yeah. uh, and it's it's one of those things that it always makes me wonder when you uh, when you find things like this how many generations of people you know how many did it go through over what period of time did it take for people to actually establish that no these are the ones that work best. Yeah. Um, it's that really. I find that quite uh, evocative. I'll just uh, read a bit of this uh, article here to give us a few mm. uh, talking points. It says the site called Ailan, Ailan Malaha or Malaha was once occupied by the Natufians, a cultural group were, that were the last hunter gatherers in the Levant, or rather, I would say the first agriculturalists in the Levant. It's another way That's of putting better, it. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. A region that spans the land around the eastern Mediterranean, uh, according to a study published on Friday. That's June the 9th. Um, Although researchers had investigated the site extensively since its discovery in the 1950s, last year archaeologists were surprised to find the flutes scattered among a stockpile of 1,100 bird bones. Yeah. Uh, Of the more than half a dozen flutes unearthed, which artisans carved out of the bones of small waterfowl, only one was completely intact. It measured less than 2.6 inches, that's 65 millimetres in length, according to a statement. I'll mm. just read on a bit, uh, Rupert, then we'll, we'll unpack it. Uh, they're probably some of the smallest prehistoric sound instruments known today, study lead author Laurent Davin, I think he's French, Laurent Davin, a postdoctoral mm-hmm. fellow of archaeology at the French Research Centre in Jerusalem, told Live Science in an email. Because of residues of ochre, we know that they were probably red painted. Because of the use wear, we think they might have been attached to a string and worn. So, backtracking a little, these, yeah. in, these things have been introduced as flutes, which rather implies that they were a musical instrument. Um, mm. That is um, 
Uh, it's, it's not the case. No, we can call it a red herring, can't we, really? Uh, we can call it a red herring. The, the uh, strict, I mean, art, the accurate thing to call them is an aerophone, which is what the, the uh, paper that this is based on refers to them uh, mm. as. Uh, flutes is a misnomer. As a complete sidebar, the, we're not talking about the earliest known uh, instruments or earliest known flutes or anything like that. Not that by a long way, no. Incredibly <laughs> goes to 60,000 years ago and uh, the Neanderthals. There's a 60,000 year old Neanderthal. Is it 60,000? Because I know about a 40,000 year old one, well, a 60,000 as well. I mean, that's just different yeah. level, isn't it? It, yeah. it is a different level. And I have seen a video of somebody uh, playing this uh, Neanderthal flute, and it's a very Amazing. pretty sound indeed. It's got three yeah. holes, for, and it's tuned. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, that is a musical instrument. This, yes. as, you, as you said at the beginning, is not. <laughs> yes. Uh, so it is reckoned to be. Let's, let's uh, talk about what, it, what mm. it is, what they're for. Yes. Well, it's, it, you know, it, the, the fascinating thing really about this is um, because that recording uh, at the beginning, I mean, that's uh, playing one of these flutes to sound like, so, so these things are made to sound like birds of prey, specifically Kestrel and Eurasian Sparrowhawk. Um, yeah. and, um, and, and you have to ask the question, well, uh, are they using them as, uh, as you know to communicate with the birds? You know, in the same way that you know, even today with uh, with people who handle birds, sometimes you, you know they'll they'll blow uh, a whistle to uh, to bring the bird in, uh, or were they trying to uh, to lure them maybe for feathers or for because uh, yeah. they did have jewellery that was made from uh, from their talons and things like that. Uh, so it, it's impossible to say for sure uh, what they were using them for, other than to lure the birds in one way or another. Uh, it's, uh, it's remarkable, 12,000 years old. So the wing bones they use specifically, I mean wing bones particularly, of course, because uh, uh, for to make them light, uh, wing bones in uh, in birds tend to be hollow, so you don't have to go through the business Always. of yes. yeah, uh, hollowing something something out. Um, the Eurasian teal and the Eurasian coot uh, are the bird wings that we, we used, and they are small and any bigger, you wouldn't be in the range Mm. Um, of sound that would imitate a falcon call. Um, mm. uh, yeah. Um, the In order to recreate that sound, that isn't the sound of an actual, one of the actual bones that was found being played. Um, that is a recreation that yeah. has been uh, uh, done and in, by examination of these bones themselves. Well, it's worth pointing out, isn't it, that out of all, because yeah. the, uh, they found out of that massive pile of bones, eleven hundred bones, they found seven flutes, and yeah. only one of those was intact. So I can't imagine they would have dared to try blowing that one. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> that. Yeah. But the but the yeah. microscopic detail that they had to examine in order to recreate that speaks to a, a huge what well, in what. On the surface of it looks incredibly simple and primitive. Mm. In order to be able to create something out of that bird bone, it takes a great deal of skill because the yeah. precision with which the finger holes, you know, for the two notes or whatever, three notes, whatever they are, that are produced. But more important than that, it's the way that the mouthpiece, because here's the thing. Uh, in that respect, it is like a flute because the sound is created by blowing over an open hole, so creating a vibration of air uh, mm. in, uh, like, like with a flute, blowing over a hole. Um, you know, you're not blowing into something, or you're not um, uh, causing a, a reed to, to vibrate, as in a, um, a clarinet or a saxophone or something like that. Um, so. To create something that small, to enable a human to make an embouchure of the right sort that can get mm. the air to blow at a precise angle over that hole to make a sound, 
That's mm. no easy thing at all. No, it speaks not. to a, a a great deal <laughs> of skill. It, it also makes me wonder. You can you can imagine uh, that uh, you know they they've eaten the birds, uh, you know, so they've had a good meal, and that's probably why there's a pile of eleven hundred uh-huh. bones. Um, and 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 from the uh, fr- the remains of the meal, they then pick through them to find uh, which ones are going to make the best flutes, and uh, you know, did they make them and then blow them and say, "No, nah, that's too low, <laughs> pitch wise." You know, did they make them and then throw them away, or did they select every time they knew that no, that'll be perfect? Um, I don't know. It speaks to it's, all. There's a whole conversation about you know the invention mm. of things and mm. the uh, um, you know the well, contingency you know, I, I, of things. I, I, I love uh, the fact that when, when you look at uh, the some of the Natufian sites, uh, for example, so uh, Israel, Jordan, um, around there, and uh, and some of the sites where they've found uh, fireplaces where people were clearly sitting around in a circle and, you know, as, as I said earlier on, you know, the earliest evidence for bread, but toast as well. The earliest known yeah. toast is Natufian, 14,000 years old. And I just imagine <laughs> these people sitting around a fire and and making these things, you know, uh, whittling away and chatting while they... It's just, it brings up all these images of people living together as opposed to you know burials where it's always about uh you know trying to make sense of the departed you know but uh, this is very much people living a life and uh yeah in- involved with their environment mm. davin said uh, these artifacts are really important because they're the only sound instruments clearly identified in the prehistory of the whole levant and the old, they are the oldest sound instruments imitating board, bird calls in the world. So they, they do get that uh, the uh, yeah. world record status uh, at one level. Uh, yeah. They tell us about the inventiveness and knowledge of acoustics of the Natufians, as well as their technical precision. It also gives mm. us the evidence of the Natufians' relationship with the symbolically valued birds of prey, how they communicate with them, or how their calls were integrated into Natufian uh, music. And I just want to kind mm. of re- reiterate that, that listening to that sound, it sounds it sounded primitive. Uh, and and mm-hmm. uh, on the face of it, the, the flutes, I would call, call them flutes for the brevity, um, yeah. the, the flutes themselves seem primitive. Um, but we're talking about the first sophisticated and starting to be settled and starting to be um, uh, uh, the, um, hierarchies involved because we're that's what happens when people settle down, apparently. <laughs> yes, uh, apparently. Uh, and they start built, <laughs> living in built buildings. You know, the, these were circular bu- uh, buildings mm. sunken into the earth with with walls, stone walls. Um, you know, Gebekli Tepe was not the first, nor no. some others knew. Um, you know, no, this, this is, goes uh, back a long time before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F- first settlements with uh, with circular buildings, and of course, Gebekli Tepe overlaps with the uh, period of the Natufian culture. So, yes, uh, they figure. would have known each other. Yeah. Mm, mm. Um, actually, also uh, one of the other points that was. Uh, just adds to the imagery, really, is that they think from the wear patterns uh, on the uh, whistles or flutes that uh, that they were worn probably as pendants as well. So yes. you can imagine them having these things around their necks before taking them out to uh, yeah. do whatever they were doing with them. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I like a, a nuanced... Too. A nuanced point that's uh, worth pointing out is that you know we are uh, in the early stage, stages of people becoming uh, agrarian. That's not to say they have done so fully already. Mm. But what has happened they, that, that they haven't suddenly invented agriculture. Um, this is um, what they have done is started to manage their environment in terms of still being hunter-gatherers. Mm. Uh, I- instead of having to chase their food all over the place, they've managed to start managing their environment so that their, their, um, their intake of food, their dependence on food, was over a 
a much broader range suddenly. There were gathering grasses, there were mm. hunting antelope, there were ha- hunting birds. Mm. So this, uh, whatever they were hunting, for what purpose, using these uh, wind instruments was part of a, a wide dietary spectrum, mm. which was the thing that was enabling them to settle down in the first mm. place. So that's one way mm. of looking at it anyway. Yes, yeah. I, I, I'm, I like the idea of uh, you know their breads being made from wild grasses. Mm. Um, again, you know, and it's just lovely imagery. That sounds it? that sounds like it could have been a lot of hard work, but apparently mm. there's been some uh, uh, experimental archaeology done on that. And actually, the, the um, a span of uh, wild grasses can be quite root- fruitful when you know what you're doing. Mm. And the thing about being in one place is, and which came first, I do not know, because wheat is no good. You know, you can't, you can, you can, you uh, reap an awful lot at one time, but you can't eat it all at one time. So mm. where do you put stuff? You put it in silos. So silos lock you into yeah. one place. Got to you know, but yeah. Which came first, chicken or the egg in that regard, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 So a couple of, so a couple of uh, duck bones lead us down quite an avenue to uh, the beginnings of... Uh, of yes. um, settled agriculture and you know, to the whole, you know, growth of civilization itself. Like I say, yes. the Tepe, ground zero, not so much. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, it, does, it really does show, you know, that uh, as I mean, as you said, you know, the the, um, the notion of uh, these people being primitive is is very very wide of the mark. You know, that's a lot of sophistication mm. going into that lifestyle. They probably mm. ate very well. Mm. I must admit, I like a bit of duck myself. Thank you for that information. Uh, hit the like <laughs> and subscribe button. <laughs> Folks out mm. there, as I said, please do have a look at our Patreon page. Link in the description below. There's loads, loads more stuff there to uh, unearth if you There have is and loads more that. stuff that is only on the Patreon site if you like what we do. So, yeah. 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 But Good stuff. with that, we will say uh, ta-ra for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you very soon. Bye-bye for now. See you next time, folks. Bye. Very good. Very good. <laughs> um, Almost sounded like we knew what we were talking about. Now. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop. Stop, 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 stop. stop. You stop. <laughs>